It's on the poll we gave you last. Okay, it's Hypel winning with D was the winner. And second place winds up being the improved secondary, followed by average passing attack, or the average pass attack, followed by Samson's production. So most of you are surprised <laughs> that Hypel is winning with defense. If I had to vote, it would have been the average pass attack. That's yep. the biggest surprise to me, that the passing attack hasn't been better. All right. I've got a cousin who's coached basketball his whole life. He was director of analytics at the University of Memphis last year on Penny Hardaway's staff. He will hate me for even asking this question. Is the three-point boom, it's changing the game, is it ruining the game of basketball? I was at the Celtics opener this week. I needed a mental health break for 20, 36 hours. They shot 61 threes. You look at Alabama and what they're doing. Nate Oates, who Danny White once hired at Buffalo, they just chuck up the threes. Golden State started this, but they, they had a generational shooter in Steph Curry. Now, though, everyone's doing it. They're doing it so much in the NBA that, that you were exploiting the efficiency. It was, it was more efficient to shoot threes than twos. Now so many teams in the NBA are shooting all the threes, it's become more efficient to go to the twos after <laughs> last season. Is it ruining the game to where it's no longer about getting an inside, it's no longer an inside out, it's basically just first one across, half court, fires up a three. Is it hurting the sport or no? I think it's changing the sport. I don't know if it's, it's hurting the sport because people are still, still tuning in. Um, there's a lot of other things that I think are ruining the sport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the lack of physicality, uh, the, the, the open space where you're not allowed to defend and, and get up into guys and make it. So I think there's other things. Um, but I, I think it's, it, it's coaches that are trying to um, make their best players feel a certain way as opposed to playing team basketball at the NBA level. Mm -hmm. College is different. That's why I still love college basketball yeah. and high school basketball because but it's more team-focused. But, but it is trickling down into the – I mean, with Nate oh, Oates doing it, you're seeing more and more mm -hmm. teams jack up threes. Rick Barnes' his teams are shooting more and more threes as we go. So I'm just wondering if this is something that you feel – again, all games change. All games evolve over time. There was a time when they went – what do you just do? Well, that's called a forward pass. So I get it. Games evolve. You don't have starting pitchers in baseball anymore. It's weird. But do you think this is a positive or a negative? Or do you think, eh, it's a fad. It'll go back the other way. Well, I, I do think, kind of to your point, it, it's a phase right now that we are in. So it, it will change and, and be different. That's why I wouldn't use ruining the game. I, I think the But that makes for a better question on a talk show. No, that's, <laughs> absolutely. But... Uh, and that's why I can go against it, John, as well. So, but I, I do think that it's not as enjoyable. It, to me, it's lazy. Like, everyone thinks they can shoot the three. Um, it, it doesn't it, – it takes away, to me, some of the skill. Like, obviously, Steph Curry and his ability to make threes has opened up the popularity of it and opened the door for a lot of this. But I also think it has brought in so many – uh, unexpected consequences because of it. Guys who can't shoot as well as Steph Curry yeah, exactly. shooting as much as Steph Curry. Right, that exactly. would be an issue. Tyler, your thoughts? I've had many college coaches from the D2, D3 level all the way up to the D1 say AAU coaches are killing the sport because they're encouraging more three-pointers and this is where things are supposed to be starting. I thought Mark knocked it right on the head with the less physicality. But if I can put Aren't my... Aren't those connected, though, in some ways? If you're not... If everybody's focus is on just shooting outside, well, obviously you're not going to focus as much on being physical inside. Right. And, and I like the old day. I'm, I'm an old guy. I enjoyed watching Bill Lambeer and Kevin McHale knock each other's That's heads off. That's my NBA. Yeah. Ewing versus Lambeer. And you don't see that anymore. We don't it's see gone. It. Exactly. If I can put my piece of tape over the bridge of my glasses and go nerd here momentarily, <laughs> what the analytics have shown us is based on a game, college minutes, and NBA minutes – Based on time of possession up and down the floor, you're starting to see higher percentage rates for the two-point, but that one-point difference and the lack of, well, the free-throw shot not being as sexy anymore, that's what's kind of equating to the results that we're seeing today, which is a shame because in college basketball, Mark, I'm not telling anything you don't already know, to win in March, you got to have great guard play and be able to hit your free throws. And that's why you're seeing it different from one level to the other. And the problem is, is... is TV, social media, they all highlight the long threes, the dunks, it's the dunks highlight, and, it's the dunks highlight bombs, reels. Yeah. But if you talk to any coach, you talk to any recruiter, it's the fundamentals, mm -hmm. it's yes. defense, yeah. it's all the things that help winning yeah. to be able to let really great players do those great things. But to your point, all 
12 kids on a roster want to be able to do the great yes. things, and nobody wants to just do the fundamental things to help you win. Well, the, the fear is, and we've got to be quick here, uh, and this gets to something Tyler's talking about, when you've got – it trickles down. When there's some high school coach out there watching what the Celtics did last year, and they have averaged 51 threes through their first three games this year. That is more than one a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and they won a championship last year, so I was against it, and it won. Uh, <laughs> but here's the deal. Some high school coaches see that, and they're like, well, we're going to do that here. And it goes down to a middle school coach that we're going to do that here. Your level where you're coaching middle school and stuff like that, we're going to do that here. All right. Well, it then comes bubbling back up because kids are used to doing that. We've seen it already. The NFL is having a hard time finding old-time, big-time offensive linemen. They're having a harder time finding traditional drop-back passers. Why? Because they're not coming out of college because everything is a shotgun offense now and spread. Why? Because it trickled up mm -hmm. from the high school ranks where coaches said, I'm going to take my best athlete, put the ball in his hand, and just let him go. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's changed the way the NFL is playing because the grassroots changed. That could also happen in basketball. Well, and, 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 and to bring it back to the UT side, this is why I think Barnes is going to continue to have success is because yeah. he's going to recruit guys with the accountability of, hey, this is how we play. This is what we do on both ends of the, on the court. This is what we're going to do to help each other win. And if you don't want to do that, then don't yeah. become a pro part of our program. These other coaches, they're just like Floridas of the world. They're going and buying the guys, yep. and, and some will turn out. But a lot of them will, will falter, and that's why I think Barnes will have this team in the top 20 all year. Uh, thanks to all of you. Mark, thanks for coming by. I know you're going to be a part of our show. Hey, it's my wife's season. birthday. If I could just say happy birthday to her. <laughs> happy quick. birthday. Thank happy. you for letting us borrow him. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate thanks it. We'll see me. you during basketball season, man. You're going over to the game this afternoon? Yes, sir. All right, very good. Uh, when we come back, let's take a look at the Vols basketball schedule this year. I always love the way Rick Barnes schedules, but I've had a couple of people – on this show, panelists tell me that that's ah, not a good schedule this year. The names look good. The NCAA records from last year aren't good. So is it a good schedule or not? Let's discuss that, then we'll get back into football. Come on back.